Hi, I'm Jack Sweeney with Business Finance Magazine, and we're pleased to have Krista Davies joining us. Now, Krista is Executive Vice President and CFO of Aon. Now, uh, Krista came to Aon only eight months ago from Microsoft, where she was CFO of the software developer's largest and most profitable division. Now, if you go back the last 18, 24 months, say, Aon has been uh, busy writing a turnaround tale. CEO Greg Case has uh, already overhauled the management there and uh, taken it to a new level. Krista uh, joining Aon is clearly part of that new management team, but our question, Krista, is really Again, why Aon, as a finance leader, why Aon? What is the challenge here that uh, you'd like to pursue? It, Jack, thank you very much for having me. Uh, as a finance leader, the opportunity at Aon is really about helping clients uh, add value and manage their risk better. And it's one of the fastest parts of the global economy. And it's uh, fantastic as a CFO to be helping uh, finance leaders manage their risk, P&L, and balance sheet better. So Krista, what is it that surprised you the most during your first six months? Well, Jack, one of the things I didn't expect was how interesting the role would be because you get insight into the global economy because risk is facing almost every aspect of the global economy, every industry, every function, every area of the world. Uh, and the, you know, the help and advice you can provide and the analytics, which are very financial from a CFO's perspective, are incredibly impactful on helping clients manage their risk better. What changes at Aon in the nature of its business? What's, what's changing there and how is that likely to influence how you go about all of what you need to accomplish? Well, Jack, in the last couple of months, we've completed the sale of our underwriting businesses, Cycra and Sterling, for $2.7 in net proceeds. That completes the sale of a number of our underwriting businesses, which has really moved us from more of an underwriting focus to really focusing us as a professional services firm on two big areas, risk and human capital management, two issues really growing in demand in the global economy. What advice would you have for CFOs within their first six months as far as what to do and what not to do? Mm, I would say one of the things uh, to really focus on is to understand the business. Because if you don't understand the business in which you're operating and the environment and sort of the industry competitive context, then it's very difficult to run your finance function in a way that adds value to the business, which is one of its core and sort of primary objectives in life. What can you tell us about how you arrived at AM? Were you recruited? How did you find out about the opportunity? Yeah, I found out about it through Russell Reynolds, a recruiting firm. Uh, they ran quite an extensive process, as I understand, from Aon's side to sort of find a new CFO. So um, I actually loved my job at Microsoft and wasn't necessarily looking at uh, leaving. But the opportunity in the industry uh, and the management team here are really very compelling. What are your top priorities now? What, what are you focused on going forward? Yeah, there are a couple of things I'm focused on, Jack. The first one is really about improving the quality of management information so that business leaders can make better decisions to ensure that we provide the best service and best impact for clients. The second one would be around improving compliance and controls to make sure that we continue to make strides as we have for the last couple of years there. The third would really be around improving efficiency of the finance organization itself. I think the organization has grown up through no fault of its own in a series of acquisitions. And we're now going through the rather, you know, analytically rigorous process of determining where everything should optimally sit. We've heard or it's been reported that within Aon there were, say, 27 sales management systems operating and that's been reduced now down to one. Clearly finance must have a similar situation where there are many, many systems out there given uh, in light of all the acquisitions that have been done. What can you tell us about that challenge and, and how you're likely to approach it? We do have that same challenge where there are a number of different finance systems and even within the same system there are different charts of accounts and methods of you know, reporting and so we are standardizing that globally so that we'll have all of our revenue and expenses uh, and the balance sheet on the same system globally. And that's, you know, quite a significant effort to pull that together. Well, Krista, thank you for joining us today. Thank you very much, Jack. I've been delighted to be here.